Did you all hear the gospel reading just now? <laughs> there are several different translations to this. I prefer, well, normally the new RS international, new RSV, new Revised Standard Version, which we have here in our text. Um, but the NIV, which I normally don't read from, that international version, instead of the word slave, they use the word servant. And actually the word there is probably closer to servant than a slave. And when we use the word slave, there's a lot of different nuances, especially given our history of slavery here in the United States. And so uh, there's a different nuance uh, in our reading when Jesus referred. Remember, Jesus didn't, spoke English, he didn't speak English. Okay? He didn't use the word slave per se, but it was a different kind of a word that actually nuanced more of a word servant or somebody who's employed by the family to serve. In any case... The important message here in this particular passage is about the disciples demanding greater faith. Increase our faith. In a world where we see so much violence on television, and uh, you know, today is a, a, a peace and global witness Sunday, you know, I'm sure a lot of churches around the world are, especially within our denomination and our sister churches, we could go through a litany of what is happening in our world. And so, I don't think there was much of a real difference during the time of Christ. Disciples were challenged. They were living under a severe oppression from the Roman Empire. There was a need for faith. They left everything behind, their family, everything they're familiar with, and they followed Christ, they followed Jesus, expecting a revolution, expecting some quite a, you know, a lot of change. There were challenges ahead. And so, given all that, given their condition, given our circumstances, I think it's very natural to ask that question or to request. We need more fuel. We need faith. Increase our faith. That was the demand that disciples asked, right? In the face of greater challenge, we need greater. That seems to be the logic, right? The more the merrier, okay. <laughs> the more the merrier, right? And when we look at advertisements, you know, it always sort of appeals to the lack of what we don't have or, you know, you thought you'd never need it, but, you know, Back in the days, it was luxury, but now today it has become necessity, right? Uh, the, the average advertising agencies know well our human psychology and know that um, they pinpoint and appeal to our sense of insufficiencies or lack of, and therefore, if we have this, if you only have more of this, then your life will be better. So, when you're miserable and your life is challenged, the disciples are saying, okay, God, Jesus, increase our faith. Give us more of the good stuff then maybe our lives will be much, much better. And I think that's also the way in which our world teaches us the value of the world is that if we have more, if we have more, if we have more, then things will be fine. Increase our faith. But Jesus responds very differently. Instead of saying, okay, here's moral faith. You need to grow your faith. Now, we have baptism today. We say we are nurtured this child in the life of faith to grow that faith, you know, and that Lucas may grow in the life of Christ so that he may display the value of the kingdom of God, the value of faith. Instead, Jesus says, rather than giving more of faith, faith is like what? If you only have a mustard seed. Have you ever seen the size of mustard seed? They're tiny, right? They're very tiny. Well, most seeds are very tiny, but mustard seed is extra tiny, so they say. It depends on what kind of mustard seed I think you're talking about. But um, they're tiny. And if you have a faith as small as mustard seed, if you, ask, if you tell the, what tree is that, mulberry tree? And, and be uprooted and be planted in another place, then it shall follow its order and its direction because if you have even a small faith you will make a difference so that's what we're talking about what is a mustard seed faith look like you know i shared this story with you once um, when i was growing up 
you know, as a pastor's kid and wanting to follow his footstep to be a minister. Um, I share with you the story of um, my experience at Billy Graham Crusade in 1973, I believe. There were um, close to a million people in the Seoul Plaza, and I sat in the asphalt, and I saw Billy Graham go over my head. I was a little kid on a helicopter, and he came and stood in the pulpit distance away, and he preached the gospel, right? So I said, when I grow up, I want to be just like Billy Graham <laughs> and save the world. <laughs> but after years and years later, I realized that I'm trying to save my own soul. <laughs> Never mind it's trying to save someone else. That it wasn't about the, all that out there. But maybe, maybe, just maybe, it's about saving our own soul. Maybe it's that mustard seed, you know. If I have faith and give myself to God, just like that child who gave five loaves of bread and two fish, maybe that is what God is seeking from us. We may not solve all the problems and issues in the world. We would like to. We have gun violence where 30,000 people die every year. or It's a huge problem, right? We still have so much problems. We have election coming up in a month. Well, two months, right? Month and a half. My goodness, it's already there. There are a lot of issues, a lot of problems. If we could only just have more faith, increase our faith, and resolve all the problems and violence in the world, if we could only do that. But you and I are called to do our part, our piece here as a faith community, to bear witness what we can do. And the remarkable thing is that if everyone step up and do what we can do, like a mustard seed. And the importance of this celebration is that we are not alone on this, but that the global community, especially the church, as we celebrate the world communion, that we are all invited at the Lord's table and we are reminded that we are not alone, that we are a community of faith that is global and that we work toward peace and creating just society. That's what our faith calls us to do, to bring peace as children of God. So we work together if we bring our mustard seed of faith together and trust in God that God will bless our faith, our move. So on this Worldwide Communion Sunday, we took a small step this day. We blessed and gave thanks to God for Lucas, his baptism which reminds of us that faith is a very vital and important part of our life together. And that we also took a small step as we lift our prayers and joys and concerns, trusting that God would bless each and every one whom we prayed for this day. And as we partake the communion, as we invite all people, wherever they may be, and we partake the elements, the bread and the wine, that there's no one left behind, that God's love, there's no one beyond the reach of God's love, that everyone, anyone, can be part of the Lord's table. And as we partake of these elements, we are acting upon our faith that we are not alone, that we are together, that it is an open table, that faith calls us to share the basic fundamental needs of our human society, which is food, hospitality, so we are reminded this day, World Communion Sunday, may the faith, may these steps that we take this day, may they grow in your hearts, in our minds and in our hearts, and may give them give you peace. And may they give you peace in our homes and in our families and in our world this day. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.